So lately I've had a really bad case of the nostalgia and uh, really having this longing to go back to Sacramento and, and visit all of my old childhood places. And at the moment I'm not exactly in a position to really do that easily, so uh, I've, I've been uh, going back in my memory to the last time I did that, which was in 2015. Holy cow, that was in 2015, that was, that felt like, oh my gosh. But I noticed something when I was there. Everything was smaller. Fields that I thought were absolutely ginormous in reality, once I looked at them in my adult body, were like, I don't know, 20 feet long or something. <laughs> don't get me started on our old front yard that I remember being huge, knowing I would play football in there all the time. And now I look at them like, I could, this would, uh, how? I could barely lay across this. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, how, how definitely, um, uh, places from your past shrink. Yeah, that's what happens, definitely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the weirdest thing to kind of wrap your head around is the people. If you had like a significant move in your childhood, you still kind of think of the friends that you left behind as being, and like everything being exactly the way it was when you left. Your friends still being like the same age even. And so, um, hmm. I've been looking through uh, on Facebook trying to find all of my old friends and let me tell you, the weirdest thing is when you find one, but your friend you remember being 13 has a beard. It's almost like this uncanny valley thing because you're like, yep, that's definitely Brett, but it doesn't really look like Brett. It looks like a, a dream of Brett. There's so much just change that happens and it it can be honestly like a, a little bit of a bummer you know but there are some things that haven't changed i have this vague recollection of one day at school we were making tiles for an art project and so last time we were there at in in sacramento i was reconnecting with one of my old friends and we decided to swing by our old school and lo and behold, on the walls of the recess playground, there was my tile. 2005! And you want to know what it was? A Pokeball. Yep, that's right. That is my, my lasting legacy. Christian Howard. A Pokeball. Welp! Honestly, that thing is probably going to outlive me. Um... <clears throat> I also, while I was there, I uh, grabbed a little bit of the bark that I used to play in as a child, and now it is one of my most prized possessions and sits in my closet in a little baggy safe. Am I too sentimental sometimes? Probably. I mean, I've had friends tell me that, like, I need to stop living in the past, but I don't know. I've had so much change that occurred in such a short period of time that, yeah, it feels like my childhood and my teenage and adulthood are two totally separate, like, lives. And so going back to my, my childhood and the locations and seeing them with sort of fresh eyes is this bizarre experience, but really cool. So to, so to me, it's, it's, not, it's not as much like living in the past as it is reinterpreting how I previously understood things to be now as an adult. And I see the world for how it really is. And I think that's cool. <laughs> and not gonna lie, it's weird for me to think that someday I'm going to do that about my early 20s, you know, when I'm like 60 years old, I'm gonna look back at these times, which again is why I'm trying to document so much of my life and not just document it, but share it with others, share it with you. I want my life to have impacted the world in some way and so these videos now are my modern tile on the schoolyard wall. I, I love the thought of someone in the year 2100 stumbling somehow across these very videos and feeling like they've gotten to know me. A, a spark, a connection that even transcends my own life. How cool would that be?